So how do you control your weather dynamically in the scene? Here I'm going to walk into a cube and it starts snowing. I'm going to click on, say, uh, that sphere up there and it'll start lightly raining. If I walk forward into this other cube, it'll go foggy. And the final cube, it'll make it heavy rain. This is a question from Nick D. How do you do this with Enviro? Well, I needed to learn the API, so I figured I'd make a little video. And here it is. To make this simple, I'm just using the sample scene that comes with Enviro and we're going to build on top of that. We'll add a cube into this scene and that'll act as our first trigger. So we'll call this rain cube and then we'll go to the collider on that cube and turn it to a trigger by clicking this is trigger box. Now let's just position it in the scene so we can walk into it and make it bigger. Now we're going to need some scripts here. So we're going to create a folder for my content, which I'll call uh, weather controller tests. This is just to keep all my stuff together and ordered. It's just a habit of mine. Inside there, I'll create a scripts folder. And then inside of there, I'll create a C sharp script. Now, Nick did say that they're not very good with uh, C sharp. So I'm going to go fairly slow as we work through this. So that script that we've created called weather controller is a mono behavior, which means we can drop it onto our rain cloud and then open it up inside of our preferred editor, which by default is Visual Studio. Now it's good practice to put everything inside of a namespace. So you type something like namespace in my case, wizards code, you can put whatever you want there. And this is about Enviro extensions. So I'm putting it inside there and then wrap everything in curly braces. Now, if you really know nothing about coding in Unity, there's a link up above to a great tutorial, but we're just gonna delete the template text that appears in here and work from there. Now you'll remember that we created the box collider that had a trigger on it. So we can use that by implementing the on trigger enter method here. Now I'm using the autocomplete in the editor because I've been coding for a long time. If you are a bit clueless, um, don't worry. It's easy to learn this stuff. Check that video that I sent earlier, but also pause the video so that you can see the, the actual text being written. Now I want to first make sure that we are actually triggering this method. So I'm just going to put a debug login, which will make something appear in the console for me. And I'm just going to say that has been a collision with the other collider. Uh, oh, sorry, that should be other rather than collider, which is this parameter passed in to the method. So what should happen here is when something triggers that trigger on our box, it will call this method on the mono behavior attached and print out a message in the console. Now for this to work, we need to ensure that our player, let's rename this object to player, has a rigid body, which is already here. The rigid body is here. And it also needs a collider, which exists already here. So we'll click on this little edit collider button and that shows us in the scene view what it looks like. It looks like it's a bit too high. It might go over the boxes. So let's add a capsule collider. And we'll make that two meters high and uh, let's say 0.2 meters or 0.3 meters wide or radius rather. And um, we're going to want to drop it down a bit so it's below that existing sphere collider. Not too far down, just make sure that it's intersecting with the ground. Okay, looking good. Now we're going to collide with our triggers. So let's hit play and try it out. Walk over to our box and yep, there we go. There's our message in the little bottom bit there and also in our console window, as we can see here. Now we're ready to actually control the weather. So going through to the Enviro documentation, we can see there's a section on the scripting API. So we'll click through here to the weather section and we can see that we can get the weather, but we can also set the weather either with a transition or without a transition. We're going to use the one with a transition. So let's grab this command here and drop it into our code. Now let's spend a moment just understanding what's happening here. We have our Enviro Sky Manager and we're going to grab an instance of that. So that is clearly the manager that we are seeing in our Unity scene. And then we're calling a method called change weather which in this case is receiving an integer ID for the weather ID. So where does that weather ID come from? Well, if we go over to our editor, we will see inside of our EnviroSky instance that there is a list of weather prefabs here. And that ID comes from those. So it starts at zero and counts down zero, one, two, three, and so on. 
So all we have to do is go back into our code and add the ID we want. Foggy is 5. Let's try that. Should be easily visible. And here in play mode, we walk in and look at that. It changes to foggy. Fantastic. Now we actually said we wanted rain, so we'll change that to 7, which is heavy rain. And there you go. We now have heavy rain. Awesome. So now let's make a foggy cube. So we'll just duplicate that cube, name it foggy cube, and move it to a different position. Now that we have it there, we can walk into it, but we have a bit of a problem now because they both have the same setting for which weather preset is used. So all we need to do is we need to create a parameter that is configurable on each object. So we're going to create a public int and call it weather ID. Now, this is the lazy way of doing it. I'm just going to show you this way first. I'll show you a better way in a moment. Um, but this is a good start. So we're going to use weather ID instead of the hard-coded ID that we had before. And now in the inspector, once it's compiled, there is a weather ID setting. So we can set that to 5 on the foggy uh, uh, item, and we can set it to 7 on the rain item. And if we hit play, the results should be two different cubes with two different weathers. And as you can see, it works perfectly. Outstanding. Now, I mentioned this was the lazy way. Um, it's bad programming practice to make these parameters publicly available unless you actually need them. But it is the way most people make the parameters available in the inspector. You can spend just a few seconds and improve your code significantly by using the serial, serialize field attribute. And that enables you to take the public scope off. It'll still appear in your inspector just as before, but now you have cleaner code. I also recommend that you get into the habit of always providing a tooltip. Now, tooltips that don't say anything useful are just annoying, but a missing tooltip is just as annoying. You'll need to remember what you did with the parameter, why it was there. So here we're adding a tooltip in that says the idea of the weather preset. See the EnviroSky instance for available presets. That should remind you six months from now, or it should give your co-designer a clue or whatever it is that you're doing. Always spend a few seconds doing this. It will pay off, I promise. Another improvement we can make here from a game design perspective is to add a new field in that is going to have the purpose of allowing us to provide a preset rather than an index into an existing preset. And this will enable the designers to just create new presets and drag them straight in in the inspector. So I'm starting out here using the serialize field and creating a tooltip to explain what's happening. And this tooltip is going to be quite detailed. It's going to say um, that if this field is null, then we will go on and use the ID above. But if this field is filled in, it will take priority over the ID. Now, you can do custom editors and things like that that will only show one of these two fields, but we're not going to do that in this video. We'll just show you how to use these various parameters. So I need to know what type to use, and I don't know the API well. So I'm using the IntelliSense inside of Visual Studio to show me the various options that I have as parameters. And that first one said that it was an Enviro Weather Preset. So I'll create that variable, Enviro Weather Preset and we'll call it weather preset, and then we'll go on to use that in our method. Now we said that if the preset was not set, if it was a null, we wouldn't use it, we'd use the weather ID. Obviously we can't use a null, so we're going to check to make sure it's not null before trying to use it, and if it is null, then we will go on and use the ID, which will default to zero, so if the designer has forgotten to set something up, it won't cause an error, it will always work. That is always a good idea. So now that that is visible in the inspector, let's go and find the presets that come with Enviro. We could create our own, of course, but we're just going to use the presets here. So I'm going to click on one, any of them inside of the inspector here, and that will ping them in my project view. This is not necessarily the default layout that you'll have, but uh, you'll find your way around, I'm sure. So I'm going to grab one of those items and drop it into our foggy uh, cube. Obviously, I want to drag the foggy one in. I'll drag that across, and now we're able to execute this. Just to prove it, I'll, I'll change that weather ID to zero. And you can see in play mode that walking in still changes it to foggy. And if we go over to the rain one, still changes it to rain. So we can now use either method. 
So now let's look at how easy it is. Let's duplicate one of those and change that to snow cube. Drag in the snow um, preset. There we go. And position it appropriately in the scene. Then hit play. And there we go. It's snowing. So we can create loads of these really quickly now. But there's more that we can do. What if we want to be able to click on these items in the scene? Let's do that. Let's create a sphere, call it the clickable rain sphere, position it appropriately in our scene so we can click on it, add our script to it so that we can change the weather, but we have a problem. We need to be able to walk into it and it's off up in the air. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it clickable. So in our script, we're going to add a new method. We're going to call this private void on mouse down which is a standard method just like the on trigger enter and it gets fired when something when the mouse is clicked on the item so we're going to refactor the code a bit we're going to take this piece that is changing the weather and we're going to turn that into a method i'm going to use the refactoring tools inside of visual studio but you can easily do this with cut and paste essentially what i'm doing is saying give me a new method and we're going to call that method set weather actually i think we'll call it change weather and that will have the code within it that we wrote earlier on. Now we can call that method inside of our on mouse down method. So now we have two ways of changing the weather. Let's try it out. Okay, in play view we see that we have a bit of a problem because the uh, character controller is moving the screen left and right, so it's really hard to actually be able to click on it. Let's fix that. So the first thing we need to do is to lock the cursor in the center of the screen. And we do that by in the awake method saying cursor lock state equals cursor lock mode locked. So now in play mode, the cursor doesn't move about, but we can't actually see where we're looking. I did click on it there, but I couldn't see precisely where I was clicking. So let's address that now. What we need is some kind of visible representation of where we're looking. So we're going to create a UI canvas and then inside of there, I'm going to add an image component. And then I'm going to select a sprite. I'll go with the knob, which is basically just a circle. And we'll give that a red color and we'll make it quite a bit smaller. That's way too big. So make it down about maybe 10 by 10. Perfect. All right. So now if I hit play, we can see that red circle in the center of the screen. There's loads of ways that you can do this, but this is quick, simple, gives you an idea. So now each of those items will work with either a trigger or a click, which is not a good idea. So we're going to add in some more serialized fields here that allow us to configure how it works. So this first one is going to be the is clickable. And the second one will be is triggerable. And then we'll use those values in the methods to decide whether or not we should allow the weather change depending on whether we've triggered it or whether we've clicked on it. And now with a little bit of configuration in the inspector, we can make different objects behave in different ways. Some clickable, some triggerable, some both. And there we have it. We have in-game control of the weather. Makes you feel all powerful. You can make it snow. You can click on things to make it go clearer. You can go and walk into things to make it foggy. You can do anything you want. Go have at it. See you soon.